Hey pilots, how's it going? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Just want to remind you that if you go to parttimepilot.com, you can download a free study guide uh, to help you study for the FAA written. So check that out, parttimepilot.com. Got a free study guide. Okay, so let's get started. Today's video is on left turning tendency. So for most American general aviation aircraft, there is a tendency for the aircraft to want to yaw and turn to the pilot's left. If the pilot does not counteract this tendency, particularly in times when it is the strongest, which is at high power and low airspeed, the aircraft will not be coordinated. So one of these examples is on takeoff. If you've flown before, if you've taken off before, you'll notice that Piper aircraft or Cessna aircraft, they want to turn to the left. They want to yaw to the left. That's why you got to use right rudder. And there are four factors that contribute to this left turning tendency. And as a student pilot, you'll want to know these because you'll be tested on these for the FAA written. And I will explain these now. So the first factor I want to talk about is called P factor or asymmetric thrust. So asymmetric means you don't have equal thrust on the left and right side. You have, it's asymmetric. And this only occurs during a positive angle of attack flight. So again, in like our climb out. So a propeller is an airfoil. So to understand this, we got to understand how propellers work. So a propeller is an airfoil, and if we remember, an airfoil is the cross-sectional shape of the wing, and this is what leads to the pressure differential, that shape, above and below the wing that creates lift. So a propeller has a similar cross-sectional shape that creates lift, but it doesn't create lift vertically like the wing does. It creates lift horizontally. So where a wing creates a force vertically, right, perpendicular to the flight path, the propeller creates a force parallel to the flight path, and that's thrust. And we know that lift is a factor of speed and angle of attack. So a higher angle of attack equals more lift, aka more horizontal lift. In this case, when we're talking about propellers, aka more thrust. So remember that higher angle of attack equals more thrust. And with two propellers, one is going to be traveling up while the other is traveling down. So if we are sitting in the aircraft right here, facing out, so this is our, our windshield, and we see our propellers, the right side in American general aviation aircraft is going to be traveling down to our eyes, and then the left side is going to be traveling up. So in level flight, both are rotating perpendicular to the relative wind. Okay, so they're rotating on this plane per perpendicular to the relative wind and therefore have the same angle of attack on their airfoils to this relative wind, so this angle here. At high angle of attack flight, the propeller traveling downwards on the right side, so again, this is our propeller here, so this one traveling down, this one is traveling up, if we're the pilot looking out at the propeller. This one over here is going to have a higher angle of attack. So that's this one on this side of the aircraft right here. And then the one traveling up over here is going to have a smaller angle of attack. So the load on the propeller, so the force that's created, again, because the right side has a higher angle of attack, the force on the right side here is going to be higher. So this is represented by this bigger arrow. And then the left side is the smaller angle of attack, so it's going to create less of a thrusting force on the left side. So the result is more thrust, again, created on the right side of the aircraft, which makes the aircraft yaw to the left. So you get the propeller spinning this way. You have more thrust on this side than on this side. It wants to push the nose to the left and yaw to the left. That is P factor. So the next factor I want to talk about is gyroscopic precession. So precession in terms of a gyroscope means that a force applied to a gyro is manifested 90 degrees ahead of where that force is applied. So if you have a gyro, right, and it's spinning here, and you apply a force to the top of it, that force is actually going to be applied 90 degrees on the side of it, making it spin to the left. Now you can actually, there's a really cool experiment that my 
instructor did for me is they have an old bike tire where you could hold on either side of it of the spokes and he would spin it and then he would basically push down on it and I could feel it want, turn to the left. Uh, it was really cool. You can ask, uh, you know, try and see if someone can do that experiment for you. It's a good visualization technique for this phenomenon. So the aircraft propeller acts as a gyro and when a force is applied to the top of a rotating propeller, the force manifests 90 degrees ahead of it. So for a clockwise spinning propeller relative to the cockpit, again, a force at the top of the propeller would manifest at the right side of the propeller, making the aircraft yaw to the left. So a force applied at the top of a rotating propeller when the aircraft is when the aircraft pitches down. Okay, so when do we get a force applied to the top of a rotating propeller? Well, anytime we pitch down, this is essentially a force on the top of, top of the propeller. So if you are pitched up and you pitch down, that force on the top of the propeller is going to manifest itself on the right side of that propeller. So again, you have an effective force from a pitch down right here at the top. And then when you pitch down, it's going to manifest itself 90 degrees. So on the right side, and it's going to want to make the aircraft yaw to the left. This is the second factor of a left turning tendency. The third factor I want to talk about is torque. So torque is a turning force about an axis. For pilots, torque from the propeller and propeller shaft can be explained simply in terms of Newton's third law of motion, which says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when the propeller spins on the propeller shaft in a clockwise direction, the aircraft engine and aircraft holding onto that shaft, okay, so the, the shaft comes out of the engine, the engine's spinning that shaft, but the, the shaft is connected to the engine, right? And the engine is spinning that shaft. And then the aircraft is holding on to that engine. You know, the engine is bolted to the aircraft. So that's all one piece. The aircraft and the engine are one piece and they're holding on to that shaft. And as that shaft spins, it's going to spin one direction. It actually is going to apply a force, according to Newton's third law, in the opposite direction on the aircraft. Now, it's not a huge force because the aircraft is so much more so much heavier, but it is a little force that leads itself into the left turning tendency. So when a clockwise spinning propeller spins, it wants to make the aircraft spin the opposite direction counterclockwise. So an American made aircraft with clockwise spinning propellers relative to the cockpit, this torque results in the aircraft wanting to roll to the left. So as you can see, the propeller here is spinning this way, and then you get the reaction of the aircraft wanting to spin to the other way, which in effect is like a roll to the left. Again, with our other two factors that we've talked about, this leads to the left turning tendency that accumulates and makes it very noticeable for a pilot, especially again in low speed and high power. Now the final factor of left turning tendency that I wanna talk about is spiral, spiraling slipstream. It's kinda of hard to say, spiraling slipstream. Just like a boat propeller in water, an aircraft propeller creates a spiraling, a spiraling stream of air that tails off of it. So if you've ever been in a boat and you see this propeller spinning, you can see the wake, you know, the little swirls, the vortices coming off that propeller in the water. So the same thing happens in the air. So this spiraling stream of air on a clockwise spinning propeller relative to the cockpit slips around the aircraft and contacts the left side of the vertical stabilizer. So the result is the same as inputting left rudder or a yaw to the left due to the force applied on the left side of the vertical stabilizer, pushing the tail of the aircraft to the right and the nose to the left. So you have the propeller spinning here, creating a slipstream. This slipstream winds itself around the aircraft and actually manifests by pushing the aircraft, the aircraft's tail to the right, which pushes the nose to the left and leads again to a left turning tendency. Okay, so those are the four factors of left turning tendency. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, or subscribed already, please do so and follow me on Instagram at part period time period pilot. And remember, parttimepilot.com, click in the menu, free study guide, enter your email 
your email, you'll get a free study guide. It's got like almost 200 slides. You can use them as flashcards to study for your FAA written test. One guy actually told me he studied it for eight hours right before the night before his FAA written test and ended up passing. So it's really helpful, I promise. It's completely free, so check it out.